Praise God. Thank you. Raven. Amen. For that introduction. And thank you all, one and all. Praise God. A hearty good night to everyone. And um, it's really a delight to be here. And I'm just really so thankful to the worship team and for the media crew and everyone that's here who has, yeah, excellent worship. That was really awesome. Um, just just uh, the dedication to prepare the sanctuary and um, just to prepare a place for the Lord to come and dwell among us. Uh, we have some material to go through because when we meet here on a once per month on a Monday to speak of the prophetic and to engage each other around this very precious and important topic, it's also a learning experience. Can I get an amen to that? It's, it's learning. We are learning as we go along. Um, we are just in the school of learning more about the Lord, more about the gifts of the Spirit, more about the prophetic, more about the calling of God and how to discern that. So much to learn. And um, one very, very critical component of learning is the doing part. The people, educators will tell you that learning is complete when it is grounded in three domains, right? Amen? The cognitive, the affective, and the psychomotor domain. So we have to be able to appreciate it. Amen? The knowledge component, we must be able to feel a certain way about what we learn, and we must, the psychomotor, do, practice what it is that we have been exposed to. So I just want to welcome those of you that are also joining um, online. I don't know if uh, media you could get to display um, the screen with the persons joining if you can. Praise God. And I would have wished that I could have shared this PowerPoint, which I did as led by the Lord um, to prepare this particular topic. But I, let me just invite us to contrite our hearts before God as we just commit this time um, in prayer. Amen. I, I'm just so appreciative of that worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, it's, there's a settling within my own spirit. Um, and the songs that were selected were just so appropriate and relevant to what I believe that the Spirit of God will say. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence in the house right now. And as we come before you, as we come before the Father, as we come with open hearts to learn of you, we will be like the disciples who gathered around Jesus, who sat at his feet. And even though Martha was busy serving meals, we want to be like the Mary who stood, who just knelt there, transfixed, just wanting to hear your words, just wanting to soak up <laughs> all that you have to give. And so when we sing tonight about your presence, we want to say to you, Father, that we value, we value the presence of, of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. We express this from our hearts tonight. The extent to which we value your presence and you are very much here and, and we just kind of feel that you're big in the place. Hallelujah. It is as though you're seated on every seat that is empty right here, that, that they are full of your presence, God. And Lord, we just thank you. And even as we come before you, we ask that you forgive us of every sin that we have committed, every sin of omission, every sin of commission, every sin, every transgression that, or iniquity within our hearts that we have harbored, that, that Lord has offended others. Forgive us for offending our friends and, and for sowing seeds of discord where we have with our mouth. God, the same mouth that we desire to prophesy, the same mouth that we desire to testify of your goodness, may you cleanse us and our lips oh God touch our lips with that coal from the altar that our iniquities will be purged that which comes out of our mouth which is an expression of our heart God we pray that your cleansing will come deep within that our mouths will be sanctified to bring your word and our hearts will be cleansed from anything that will prevent, inhibit that which you will do in us and through us. God, we commit this time. We commit everyone that's joining us online. We commit everybody that's right here tonight. And we give you praise and glory. Just before we begin, Lord, I just reach out right now. Hallelujah. For everyone that's not well. 
If they are not well, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we release the healing grace of the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. I remember Amanda right now. Father, that you bring healing, you bring freedom, you bring your deliverance right where they are. In the name of Jesus Christ, that the anointing of your Spirit, hallelujah, will bring healing to sick bodies and cause their hearts and their minds to focus and to function as your Spirit will lead them. God, we come with great expectation tonight for what you will say and do in the midst of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I am particularly, <clears throat> excuse me, excited about sharing this that the Holy Spirit has downloaded within my own heart. And just to give you a brief, I mean, when I thought of this topic, I, 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 don't know what I was thinking of. <laughs> Meaning I just, it just deposited my spirit. Speak on the heart of prophecy. There's been a lot of teaching on the heart of the prophet. But um, in searching through, you, you seldom, if you do find, you can let me know, a teaching on the heart of prophecy. I, I'm, this may not be the only one. There's nothing new under the sun, but I, I try to. But um, the, I just felt the Lord is leading me to reveal uh, a perspective that will help us to demystify this whole thing about um, the prophetic grace and how we can receive and give to become clear channels for, for the Holy Spirit to use us and to speak through us. And so um, the, my heart in preparing this is to bridge that understanding gap, amen, to help us to better appreciate what prophecy is about. And so when we say the heart of prophecy, we are looking at what is the core of this thing? What was God's intention in establishing this? And why is it so critically important as emphasized by Joel, as emphasized by Jesus, as emphasized by the Apostle Paul? Amen. In his teachings in 1 Corinthians 14 about the importance of prophecy and why we are in this time in the age that we are in today and why God would require this of us as a sign to the world and as his voice to the nations. And so I'm just going to share as we go along. I have a few slides to share with you. And I call this one from heart to heart. When we speak of the heart of prophecy, we cannot help but reflect on the heart of God. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. So the heart of prophecy is centered around the state of God's heart in relation to his intent. Amen. To his intent and purpose that is associated with a person or a people, let me say that again, the heart of prophecy is centered around the state of God's heart in relation to his intent or purpose that is associated with a person or people. I'm going to make this presentation available, so um, don't sweat too much about trying to get every word that I say, but, you know, the other things that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you, just write that. That's what I heard the Lord said to me when I was preparing, just write. <laughs> Prophecy was never intended to highlight or draw attention to the person releasing the word, nor the gift. Now we need to make that clear. Prophecy was never intended to highlight the prophet, nor the gift of prophecy. Prophecy is about communication. Amen? That's what it's about. It's about communication. God wanting to speak. And, and, and if him can get anything that's willing, he will speak through them as he did with the donkey. But we're not going to canonize the donkey and say, oh, donkey, prophet donkey. We're not going to do that because we are focused on what? God speaking, even though he was speaking through a donkey. So the focus is never the person. The focus is never the gift. The focus is what is it that God really wants to say? Amen? And once we get that right, that is foundational. And everything springs from that. In Numbers chapter 11, I want us to turn to that, um, if we can, very, very quickly. Um, because we're going to take a look at God's heart. And uh, we want to 
Let's see if I can use this mouse a little faster. We're going to look at one or two verses of this famous passage. Um, and just to give you a brief on it, you know, God was feeding the children of Israel with manna from heaven until it got to a time where they were tired of it and they asked for meat. And so God brought in quail and all that sort of thing and they grumbled. All sort of things happened in that time. Moses, of course, was caught betwixt and between and he represented the people to God and then represented God to the people. We're going to learn later on that that's one of the roles of the prophet to be that between person that represent God to the people, represent the people to God as an intercessor and as a prophet. Now, um, when Moses approached God, God told him that, listen, I'm going to do something. Get 70 elders, and I'm going to take the spirit that's upon you and put it upon them. All right? Because we, we have to manage all of these people, and the best way to do it is that we need to replicate you. So get 70 elders, and I'm going to put your spirit upon them. And so Moses did that. And of course, as the spirit of God took Moses' spirit and put upon them, they started to prophesy. And then there were two guys who were not there. They were elders as well, but they were not there. And then when, all of, when that started to happen, these guys, the names were Eldad and Medad. When that started to happen, now they started to prophesy even though they were not there in the company. And some, somebody said, well, no, Lord, no, those people are prophesying. Stop them. And Moses said to them, I wish to God that all his people were prophets. That's a famous um, scripture that you all know. Let me just, I just kind of paraphrase the whole story. Verse 26 says, however, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and, the, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. We like to borrow that verse and declare it in the hearing of everyone that I wish that all God's people were prophets. It's not a strange declaration. Paul himself picked it up in 1 Corinthians 14 and says, um, it's nice that you speak in tongues, but I rather that you prophesy. So there is this focus and emphasis on prophecy as we see here Moses doing. But there's something that I want to bring out from this passage in the same way that God took the spirit that was upon Moses and put it upon others read further down and it says it's a very important verse here um, in verse 16 in verse 16 not further down it's more further up when God spoke to Moses to tell him to bring the, the 70 elders, he said, The Lord said to Moses, Bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting that they, uh, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there. And I will take some of the, listen to this part. I will take some of the power of the spirit that is on you and put on them. They will share, and I want us to underline this, they will share the burden of the people. They will share the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to carry it alone. That is one of the keys that we need to understand about the spirit of prophecy. Sharing the burden. So in the same way that God took the spirit that was upon Moses and put it on the elders, the burden that God carries in his heart, the heart of God, the prophet, when we stand between the people and God, some of that burden that is on God's heart comes upon the prophet in the same way. And that, my friend, is capturing what it is about this heart of prophecy it has a lot to do with what's on God's heart what is in God's mind what is God's intention and and we need to get to know what that is be associated with him long enough to know what it is to bring out with what what is on our heart but the other thing is 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 
they will bear the burden of the people. So there's also the issue of the burden of the people. So there's a burden that's on God's heart and the burden that's on the people. So that demands that the prophet has to become associated with the people's pain to understand their burden in order to make good representation before God. And in understanding not just their burdens, but their struggles and all that is going on in their time, to observe, to look to see what's happening, and then become so burdened that, that you get to understand what is in the burden of God's heart, you carry out the prophecy that comes in the midst of that is a combination of the burden of the people and the burden that's on God's heart. And when that word is declared, it brings to attention and it causes people to come to repentance because it is properly turned in God's heart. It is then, it is then masticated in the mouth of the prophet, chewed up, and when it is spit out, it comes it with everything that, 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 that um, makes it a potent word. I have to declare it like that because we get to understand that um, everything is contextualized. So the person who is standing as the prophet in that time, um, their personality comes to bear on the word. The burden comes to bear on the word. They use the language of the season and of, of the people and what they are socialized with. So sometimes it's not such a good thing to repeat what you see in the Bible if it is not relevant to your time. So the these and those and thys and some of the phrases that we pick, pick up from scripture and it makes the prophecy sound more authentic is not necessarily making the prophecy authentic because it may not be relevant to your time. So they spoke about harvest and they spoke about seed and that's because they were an agrarian society. So they'll talk about these things, a low cost, and the, the examples that they use was relevant to their time and to their season. And the language of the prophecy that came out was, 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 was captured to, to get the people's attention because this is what they could relate to. So when it is chewed up in the mouth of the prophet, he, he spits it out with relevance. It has context. Are you getting the message? That is the heart of prophecy. But we need to examine sometimes when we, we, we bring a word. As to sometimes what we have in our minds. And, and you know, this is one of the reasons why we need this teaching. Is to help us, I said it earlier on, to demystify this thing. We, we put a lot of glory around the word prophet. And it seems like a prophet. You know, when it's just communication. Amen. And, and, and we need to, to, to remove some of those accolades so we can dissect and get to the core of what it is that God is doing. Once we get to that place, our understanding is elevated and we are now in a better position to be a clear channels for God to speak through us. If the intent is to bring God's word to the people's hearts, then that would be our focus. Whatever it takes, we're going to conform. So I'm going to share some more about conforming to God's heart. Amen. Don't want to get ahead of myself. So, so we see therefore that this, this positional thing in which God took the burden from Moses and put upon the people is a similar thing that happens when we stand in the presence of God where he takes the burden of his heart and put upon our heart. So we move to the whole matter of carrying the burden. How do we carry that burden the prophet carries the burden of the people to God and expresses the burden on God's heart to the people prophecy is therefore stimulated by the response of God's heart to the state of his people in relation to his purpose so he has a purpose for the people and they are departing from it then his heart is turned against them they depart from it and they you know all we like Sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. And then the Lord laid upon Jesus, God laid upon Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So as a prophet, Jesus bore the burden. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray and he just took it on. He took it on. And the only way to deal with it 
is to, to do a redemptive work. Amen. He became a sin offering for us that we who were with sin can be made what? The righteousness of God in Christ. First Corinthians 14, 3 to 5, we learn what well, the three of the purposes of prophecy is edification, exhortation, and comfort. We're going to talk some more about that when we look at personal prophecy. So the capacity to hear and to conform to God's word, to carry his burden and to deliver his message is known as prophecy. <laughs> so it, it, it is now forming itself into a definition. We, we, we are going the other way around. Instead of saying prophecy is, we're going to say what is prophecy. Amen? When we say what is prophecy, you understand it better. This is prophecy. The capacity to hear and conform to God's heart. To carry his burden and to deliver his message is known as the gift of prophecy. It's a capacity. And so we're talking about a gift as a capacity. A gift as, as, as something that is that speaks to how well you're able to understand and interpret God's heart. Amen. And so the people that are known as prophets are people who consistently, emphasis on the word consistently, display a facility and accuracy in the gift. So, you know, many of us are called, you know, as the scripture said, I would that all his people were prophets. And Paul says, I'd rather that you prophesy. So every single person, every one of us, as Joel says, I will pour out in the last days my spirit upon all flesh. All means all. Everyone, therefore, has that um, opportunity to, to be used by God in the prophetic grace. But not all are prophets. Amen. So who then is a prophet? The one who consistently display that facility and accuracy in this gift. Accuracy in the knowledge of God, what's on God's heart. Accuracy in the delivery of the word and its impact on the hearers, the people who are hearing it. That is a prophet. It takes a while to build that capacity. Amen. It takes a while to build that seasoning. In hearing you know Jesus says my sheep hear my voice so it, it takes a while to be a consistent sheep obeying and, and just wanting to do anything he says it takes a while to crucify what I want you know um, the crucified life is the key to victory over sin and so it takes a while to get to that stage and so those these people are baked in the crucible for quite a while uh, you know out of surrendering and and allowing God to be God in their lives for them for us to use words like consistently associated with them are we getting the message amen let me move on so one of the things that we need then is a revelation of God's heart hallelujah thank you father Lord reveal your heart to us help us to know what's on your heart in Amos chapter 3 verse 7 now we're getting we're getting some more into revelation right so we want to talk about the revelation of God's heart in Amos chapter 3 verse 7 it says surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants the prophets God does nothing without revealing his plans to the servants the prophets nothing takes god by surprise amen so when covid happened that nobody never had to wake up god and say what 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 more covid what do you so but that oh, nobody didn't tell me god don't say that because he knew what was going to happen before it happened and um, there are many people who spending time in god's presence had a hunch had a knowledge of it because god does nothing without first revealing it to his servants the prophet so when we look at words like revealing we are beginning to understand that prophecy therefore is about revelation amen somebody say revelation it is about revelation God knows nothing without revealing and so God wants to reveal what is in his heart through us uh, in revelation 
So that's, that's a little bit about Amos then um, to help us to understand how God used Amos in that time. And he was the one who brought the scripture. He was from Judea, a Judean shepherd. And um, he wrote at a time of relative peace and prosperity. So, you know, ordinarily you would say, well, there is no need for any damnation kind of prophecy. It was peace and prosperity during that time. But he spoke against the increased disparity between the poor and the, and the rich. It was like a huge gulf between the two. There are many parts of the world today that you see where you see that. Right? This huge distance between the poor and it grieved his heart. And um, his major themes when you read the book of, of Amos, you see things like justice coming on. Right? We are sh sharing with you now how the heart of the prophet is seasoned. Um, you see things like justice, you see things like about God's omnipotence, yes, it's about the divine judgment of God because all of these characteristics of his heart was relative to the time that he was in and the burdens that he was carrying. Once again, we're talking about carrying burdens. So if you want to begin to prophesy, you have to first talk about what are the burdens they are carrying. Amen. You don't just prophesy out of the blue like that. You, you carry some burdens. Amos was carrying these burdens. And they became like staples in his prophetic words. So God called Amos to confront the wrongdoing of the people of his time. The people of Israel. And the words that he brought also offered them an opportunity or a chance to... To repent so conforming to God's heart the heart of the prophet is a heart that is conformed to God's heart where do we see that word conform you remember the scripture in Romans yes I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present yourself a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed hallelujah so that's the first place we met this word conform what is conforming to God's heart I don't know what comes to your mind when you think of conform you don't know what is in the dictionary but what comes to your mind molding yes I love that one change yes change is a word that pop into your mind what about being like him conforming to his heart be like him and so it, it has something about about um because when you call, it's a be not conformed to this world according to romans it's like you're like the world you act like them you love them ways and you don't and he's saying be not conformed to the world but be transformed so when you are conformed to god's heart we are like him we are putting on his burden, yes. We are putting on his ways and we are desiring his ways and his burden because we want to be conformed to him, to what is in his heart. So we have to do that to understand the plans and the secrets of God. So, so then, a conformed heart is a heart that desires God's ways. Amen? And we know, we know the scriptures... Um, tell us in Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9 that as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts and Colossians Paul in Colossians pick it up in chapter 3 verse 2 and says set your affection on things that are above not on things that are on the earth so when you, when you match the two scriptures, you're seeing that there, we have to be, and Paul went some more when you look into Romans, about, you know, to be heavenly minded is life and peace. So there's this whole thing about um, focusing uh, your attention on what is up there and not what is down here. And, and it's about aspiring for what is on the heart of God, not on things of the earth. If you desire to move in the prophetic, we have to understand that that therefore is the substance that is the heart of prophecy. 
So we can't speak about the heart of the prophecy, with prophecy without talking also a little bit about the heart of the prophet. Isaiah 59, I'm going to turn to that very quickly so we can look at a few nuggets about the heart of the prophet. Make note of that scripture, Isaiah 59. In Isaiah 59, let me just find it here on my, yeah. Alright, it's not coming up on my computer, but I'm going to bring it to my Bible. Isaiah 59. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Um, hallelujah. No, I just wanted to go through a few of the verses as, you know, select verses from that um, chapter. Thank you guys for finding that for me. Isaiah 59. Let's find it here. Hallelujah. So here is Isaiah crying out. He says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that you, he will not hear you. So Isaiah is speaking from a position as if he's taking on the burden that is on God's heart and he's communicating that to the people in his prophecy. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken lies and your tongue uh, mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice and no one pleads his case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments and speak lies. So Isaiah was like regurgitating all that, the mess that was around him and he's just bringing it out in his prophetic word to help them to understand this is the way in which they have erred and they have sinned and they have departed from the Lord and he's expressing this with all of the, the pain that was in God's heart. The pain just coming out in the words that he's expressing and if you read right through that chapter you begin to see all of that coming out. Right? Verse 5, they hatch eggs of vipers and spin um, and spiders will be speaking about the deception in the people. Whoever eats their eggs will die and when one is broken and other is hatched and, and is going in colorful language to get them to understand the extent of, of their sin. Verse 8, the way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them from crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. And he spoke about justice that has been contaminated and what was absent among the people and what God needed, that where God needed a change to come. A prophet that carries that burden. You can't keep still, but you have to let God just speak through you and articulate it in a way that the people can understand. So the language itself may come out colorful, but it, it brings the extent of God's pain very clear in the ears of those that are hearing. We're talking about the heart of the prophet. Amen. So we see that scripture brings it out. Now, Jeremiah chapter 8. Thanks again, guys. Jeremiah chapter 8, 18 to 22. Brings a similar thing. Now, we all know Jeremiah. We know of Jeremiah as the weeping prophet. In chapter 8, verse 18 onwards, he says, You are my comforter in sorrow. You who are my comfort, comforter in sorrow, my heart is faint within me. Listen to the cry of my people from a land far away. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is our king no longer there? Now these are rhetorical questions that he's asking because of what he saw happening among them. And then he says, why have they aroused my anger with your images, with your worthless foreign idols? You, you know immediately where that is coming from, don't it? I'm talking about idolatry and I'm talking about it, you know, expressing um, the pain that is in God's heart. He says, the harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. 
Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn, my horror grips me. Then he says, and this is very interesting, he says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no healing for the wound of my people? I tell you a little story about this balm in Gilead thing because um, when Israel had gone into the promised land, they are a part of Gilead. And Gilead was a country on the bank that they had a lot of... Um, there are some trees that secretion from the trees was like a like a sap something almost like turpentine it was a bomb and 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 so it was it worth something like 10 it, 10 times more its value in silver very precious and they use it for healing and so gilead was filled with all of that and so they used to export it and and and, and you know and earn a lot from it so the agony on i on 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 on, on jeremiah's heart was even though there was an abundance of balm, the people not healed. He said, yes, there's no balm in Gilead. It's like you said, boy, St. Thomas full of mango and there's so much hungry belly people. You say, but isn't there mango in St. Thomas? You know, it's, that is a kind of rhetorical question. How come we have this and people are suffering so much? Is there no balm in Gilead? This is our mainstay. This is what we export. This is what we make money from. And we have people suffering. And these were the rhetorical questions he's asking to express the pain. Of having to witness so many people in anguish. When was the last time we cry out like that? Let me pause, but move away from this for a while and ask us that question. When was the last time we carry burden to the point where we are in tears? When was the last time we intercede until we feel something of poor from which stomach about what we see around us? When was the last time the burden was so heavy that we couldn't keep still? That is the heart of the prophet who carries the burden. And, 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 and shout it out to the people to get them to understand what is on God's heart. But I take you to this, and which is very important, another important aspect of the heart of the prophet. Chapter 5 in the same book, Jeremiah chapter 5. In Jeremiah chapter 5, and in verse 1 and we can take instruction um, from this this is this is instruction that God gave to Jeremiah and I think we can learn from this he says go up and down the streets of Jerusalem That's what God said to Jeremiah to do go up and down the streets of Jerusalem Look around and consider. Search through her squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem. In other words, observe. Amen? That's what he's saying. Observe. He's saying to Jeremiah, pay attention. In other words, I'm saying this to us. Don't bury your head in the sand like an ostrich and think things won't change. You have to pay attention. You have to look at the suffering. Look at it. Don't turn away your face, but look at it and see it for what it is. That's what God said to Jeremiah. Walk the streets. Walk the streets. When last you go downtown, just go down there and look. Go into an inner city community. What we did the other day in walking, this prayer walk that we did is one of is this, this is fulfilling this. Go up and down the streets. Look at poverty in the face. Go into the communities, go into the houses, meet the people, see what they're suffering from and what they're going through. Until you do that, you don't understand the heart of the prophet. Feel some pain. Look at some bad scenes. That's what God told Jeremiah. Go up and down the streets. Get acquainted. Be observant. You get to understand the, the wounds and the pain and the suffering that people go through. I remember stopping at a shop one time. I was driving and well, several years ago. And um, I, you know, I had to buy credit for my phone. So I stopped to buy credit in the shop. And when I went in there while I was waiting, just, I drove through this little inner city area. 
and um, somebody came in to buy food grocery and he asked for a half a loaf of bread and three sausage the shopkeeper opened my tin of sausage and take out three brethren said what I didn't even know them do them something I was in the shop when this happened and then we slice up our bread and sell a portion and take out one sausage and sell some and that was dinner go up and down the streets go up and down the streets and you see what I go on that's what God told Jeremiah to do get real sometimes we get to church you know get to church you get real get real and you get to understand what's on God's heart is there no bomb in Gilead my cousin don't eat mango I always laugh at him and say you're not a true Jamaica <laughs> we Jamaican don't eat mango but he says to me that he love when mango season come because there's one time when you know it's a poor people belly can't hungry no, it's a serious thing. Just eat two mango and you're good. Two big mango and you're good. Amen. I don't know if this is making any sense to you, you know, but brethren, we need to <laughs> we need to change. We need to change the script about prophecy. Get rid of the high and lofty thing and the titles. Get rid of them something there that you know we, we don't really understand where really are going so we take you now to i'm gonna finish soon but we come, we're gonna take you now to um talk about conforming to god's heart and the heart of the prophet now we want to talk about the expression of god's heart so the expression of God's heart is communicated through a language that can be assimilated by the heart of man. So when God talk through a prophet, it's communicated in a way that the people can understand. And the objective is the changing of hearts. So the message that is expressed through, through the prophetic grace or gifting um, on the prophet is delivered through his or her personality and the message is contextualized by the prophet's socialization, his experiences. And, you know, see him, Jeremiah, will go up and down and see what I go on. Right? And we saw the thing that we read, what I'm talking about. Right? All of it came out. Just go on a corner one time, just pitch, and just listen to the argument with the man of my Just listen to the conversations. And you hear what I go on. Right? So that's what Jeremiah did. And it came out, it was part of the language. So express prophecy, therefore, considers what, who, when, where, how, and why. It is answering, seeking to answer all the questions. So the New Testament prophetic experience we know was announced by Joel, and in Acts it was fulfilled. When Joel said, in the last days I will pour out, the last days began on the day of Pentecost. And it will continue until Jesus returns. So we are in the last days. Amen. So one of the primary things that came out in that word, that prophetic word from Joel that, that Peter got up and spoke about in Acts 2, 17 to, to 18, if you want to make a note of the scripture, is prophecy. So he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and they will what? They will prophesy so this language is unmistakable when it comes to this new covenant that universalizes the spirit's empowering presence everybody in the world he says all flesh so it's it's universalizing this outpouring i'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh i'd like to say on all who is willing to receive 
So in other words, it is irrespective of age. He says, upon your old men, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So the prophecy is, no, is, is irrespective of age. You speak about the young and the old. It is irrespective of gender. It says upon your sons and upon your daughters. So it is irrespective of gender. And that was the only two genders used. <laughs> Amen. And it was also irrespective of social rank. It says upon your servants and your handmaids. So that has to do with your social status. Right? So irrespective of that. All flesh is also irrespective of race, whether you're black, white, or pink, or brown. And so this outpouring is for everybody. Amen, as the comedians would say, for everybody. It is for everybody upon all flesh, Jew and Gentile alike. It therefore means that you and I have an opportunity to taste of this experience. I hope that you're all following those of you that are joining virtually. So the foundation and basis of all prophetic ministry is revelatory. Amen? If it's a prophecy, you think of revelation. It's the revelatory work of the Holy Spirit. Prophecy is always about communication. Amen? And the communication of something that the Holy Spirit has revealed or disclosed to a person. 1 Corinthians 14, read it when you get a chance. Um, read it again, I should say, because I'm sure you're all familiar um, where Paul speaks a lot about the order in the church, or how, the Holy, how the Holy Spirit operates. But he says, but if verses 24 to 26 of 1 Corinthians 14, he says, but if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they are convicted of sin and are brought under judgment by all, as the secrets of their hearts are laid bare. So they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. Amen. So when the secret of men's hearts are made bare through revelation, men are gripped with fear and they bow down and they serve God. So that's one of the things, the functions of the prophetic in the congregation. The prophecy in Joel spoke about dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And this we are beginning to discover is one of the most, is one of the popular medium through which God speaks to his people dreams and visions. Be open to dreams and visions through which God, you know, the scripture says that when man, when slumber take us, right? Sometimes God can't get your attention while you're awake. Some wait until you sleep, right? And then God speaks. In Matthew chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 2, we see examples of how um, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph several times. And the scripture says, in a dream. And, 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 and he got warnings in a dream. He got revelation in a dream. I'll just quickly turn to, um, in, in chapter 1 of Matthew, verse 20. You find chapter 1 of Matthew and verse 20 and then chapter 2. We wanted us to take a peek at this to help us to appreciate how dreams work and why God is desirous of speaking to us in dreams. He says, but after he had considered this, you know, this is about Joseph and, you know, the whole thing about his, his wife becoming pregnant, not by him and all of that situation that he had to contend with. Uh, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Right? Comfort him. The Holy Spirit, comfort him how? In a dream. Chapter 2 now, verse 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. And, have, and having been warned how? So warnings come in a dream. Amen? Having been warned in a dream not to go back. To Herod, they returned to their country by another road. Verse 13. The next verse, 13. When they had gone, and an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph again, oh, in a dream, and said to him, Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod, I think he's dead or something like that. But anyway, the next verse, verse 22, verse 19. Verse 
verse 19. And after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream again to Joseph in Egypt. And finally in verse 22. But when he had heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, having been warned how? Oh, in a dream. We are seeing the importance of the dream as a means by which God communicates his heart. Don't take your dreams lightly, especially when you don't know why you had that dream and why it is so perplexing and why the things in it you have never even think is not the dumpling that you ate the night before. There's something different about that dream that God wants to communicate an aspect of his heart to you. And this is one of the ways that he chose to do it when he can get your attention. When, when, because while you're awake, you're too busy. A winding down now, the last two couple slides. Express prophecy. To express God's heart, prophecy therefore utilize events that are determined by time, geographic location, and they may incorporate other elements such as the environment, the weather conditions, earthquake, and so on, the cosmos, the stars, and the galaxies, and so on, and, and world events, things that are happening in, in, in today, right, to get the attention of people. Prophecy also responds to the burden of man by revelation expressed through words of knowledge, right? And, um, and I, the, the, the five senses that you have, the five natural senses, there are five spiritual senses that are equivalent. So for, for natural seeing, there is spiritual seeing. For natural hearing, there is spiritual hearing. There is spiritual tasting. There is spiritual touch. And all of these things are manifestations of the spirit. In the five, I call them spiritual senses. It happens because you may feel somebody's pain. It's not your own and you feel it in your body, but you're really feeling it in the spirit. Prophecy is therefore expressed also in this form, in this medium. The spoken word. I'll make this available to everyone. And I'll just quickly gloss over this. Um, I, I mentioned it just that to, to make the message complete. Um, the spoken word comes in past, present, and future tense right um if you can just find luke 1 verse 67 we're going to read read a passage there prophecy may be spoken in the past present or future tense or a combination and yet it maintains the central core or the intent of god's heart so it doesn't matter if it comes in past tense we understand that god sees the end before the beginning so sometimes a prophetic word which says and you have done so and so you don't do it yet you know but it says you have done it and it's speaking of it in the past tense right as something that's already accomplished but it's really something to come but god sees it as having been done you have to understand the spirit of prophecy so in this passage in luke 1 67 to 79 all right we just want to take a a quick look at this Hallelujah. In Luke 1, so it says, His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. This is really Zechariah's song. It was a song, but it came out in a prophetic word. It says, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to, to, to his people and redeemed them. Redeemed past tense. Right? Read on. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and you my child will be called prophet you are speaking about john right prophet of the most high for you will go on before the lord to prepare 
the way for him now in that old passage we saw past present and and future coming out um i um zachariah was just speaking um after his mouth was open because you know god had, had actually silenced him because he never believed at first what was going to happen so very quickly i just state these things and move on the past tense communicates god's foregone decision on a matter that is yet to come or it may speak of an event that has already happened but has not yet been revealed right present tense communicates god's grace and patience in a matter that is happening that is in progress for which his desire can be measured and is related to a season that he has determined to conform the hearts of his people right example of that um you know in when jesus spoke to the woman at the well he says a time will come and now is when the true worshipers right will worship him in spirit and in truth him said time will come future but now is present when the true worshipers will not worship on the mountain but will worship him how in spirit and in truth let me just move on my penultimate slide future tense therefore communicates the intention and conditions for change prophecy that is expressed with the future tense like second chronicles 7 verse 14 if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven i will heal their sin i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land he's speaking of future and it has conditions assigned to it if my people you're getting the message brethren future tense in prophecy also is predictive like when simeon prophesied after he saw the baby jesus christ him say this it will be like um what a, a light to the gentiles simeon don't know him at all what a light to the gentiles a jew talking about that you know say take something big for him to talk about the gentiles and say it shall be a light to the gentiles start to prophesy about what will happen um, when this christ child is is manifested um and, and grows up this is what god has promised and he spoke in future tense predicting of course the victory that will come and the salvation that will be there not just for jews but also the gentiles my final slide um, that deals with the purpose of personal prophecy and to bring out a few thoughts for us as we we consider each other in recent times in the past maybe a couple decades there was a resurrection of the focus on personal prophecy and much of what we do in church tend to center around personal prophecy you know prophecy that you give to one another and a lot of that going on you don't have the kind of prophecy predictive prop you don't hear a lot of the predictive prophecy about the world and events and um you know those high big prophecies um you know about the galaxies and what will come and our earthquake and you don't hear a lot of that but you'll hear more personal prophecies edification exhortation and comfort so prophecy then in this dimension is for edification exhortation and comfort first corinthians 14 verse 3. prophets can also function to disclose the secrets of men's hearts to cause them to repent first corinthians 14 24 to 25. a prophetic word can provide us with specific guidance remember in acts 13 when the the elders prayed together and them said separate unto me barnabas and saul for the work that i have called them god spoke to them and gave specific direction to guide now they may have already received the word you know because of all that was happening the prophetic word therefore came as a confirmation of of the direction of their heart and god now solidifying the whole move by by bringing this prophetic word to guide them and it also made the apostles accepted what was to happen and to release um barnabas and saul into the work of the ministry 
A prophetic gift is to provide us with resources for to wage war. Now we need to consider this dimension as well to wage war. So, so Paul spoke to Timothy in First Timothy 1 18 to 19, and he said, This charge I entrust you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies, in accordance with what the prophecies that were given to you, previously made about you, that by them you must war a good warfare by the prophecies what you must do war it, it prepares you it gives you um, it helps you to wage a good warfare holding faith and a good conscience so by consistently reminding yourselves and I want us to reflect pause for a while and reflect on some prophetic words that we have received right we're getting into the belly of this thing some of them don't yet come to pass but by them you can wage a good warfare if some things God have said about you don't come yet and and you're getting attacks on your health you know you can't die yet why because that which God has said about you not yet fulfilled so now you know where to tell the devil to go amen you cannot accept death because your time don't no come yet because there are still a number of things that God has spoken to you by the prophetic word that has not yet come to pass. It helps you to do what? Fight or to wage a good warfare. Amen. I will stop there tonight. There's so much, so much in this that it, my heart was full as the Lord just released these nuggets as reminders to us that we need to appreciate the heart of prophecy emphasis on the word heart it's not about the prophet it's not about the gift it's about the communication the message that God wants to soak us soak in our hearts that we can really be sensitive to what it is and how do we do it brethren let's do what jeremiah did go out there to observe go and look go and notice the things that are happening feel the pain of those who are suffering around us i want us to do one exercise to help us to come a little bit into this add a few things i have in here for activation and before i do this can we just Let's just pray to ask the Holy Spirit to, to just solidify this message in our hearts. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for the awakening that you're doing by your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for hallelujah. Your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love, God, and for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy and for your grace thank you for your forgiveness thank you that you can still find use for us in spite of lord the times when we have disappointed you lord we thank you tonight hallelujah that there is a greater work that you have for us lord that as long as we are alive hallelujah we know that you will be determined to fulfill your purpose and god tonight we want to make ourselves available we want to make our hearts available that we might be conformed to you that God we will our hearts will will be conformed to your heart for your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts than our thoughts we pray that Lord God you help us to con to change almighty God that we will be receptive to what is in your heart help us oh God to be sensitive hallelujah to your moods it's not about us it's about you help us oh God to care for the things that you care for to love the things that you love and to hate the things that you hate us how to be observant teach us how oh god to 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 walk around and to observe and and, and to be intentional oh god about about our understanding and our awareness of what is happening oh god that when we see injustice we will cry out for justice when we see the suffering we will cry out almighty god for redemption help us god to carry these burdens that are on your heart that we will be seasoned oh god hallelujah by these burdens to move as you you cause us to move you call us to move God and to say and do the things that you have called us to do and say in Jesus name we pray 
I want to call a volunteer for prayer. Someone, in fact, very often we use volunteer in church. It not happen. As nobody likes a volunteer, right? So I volunteer you. <laughs> Come, my sister. Yeah, we want to pray for you. But so this is what we are going to do. One of the burdens that she carry, I'm sure there may be several things, right? Is that she needs an office space to practice her craft. We're going to take that before the Lord in prayer. But you're going to find that as you begin to pray for her, on different ones of us to pray for her, I want you to pray what comes to your spirit as you carry this burden, right? Her burden, she needs an office space. We know what that means. Frustration when she can't find off his face. Can't get to do our business and it's not coming out well. It's affecting her finances. All kind of things happening. So this is her burden, all right? Want us to pray for her. All of us going to pray. And then I'm going to ask some of us to tell me what comes to your spirit instantly as you carry this burden, all right? No, we're not just doing this for the practice, you know. We're really doing this. And we're really praying for her. Amen? Really praying for my sister. Are you with me? All right, let's just pray. Let's pray. So here we are. We're going to just pray for a while. Hallelujah. In this atmosphere, the first thing that comes to your heart, God speaking to you. There's no doubt, no doubt at all about God speaking to your heart. Pray for our sister. I invite those persons that are joining us online you can pray as well for my sister and I may just very well ask one or two of you to share what comes to your heart as you pray as you carry her burden some things that come to your heart might not even be related to the office face but it's coming to your heart amen Rosie, come tell me what just come to your spirit. Anybody else, just raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to just come and share quickly what comes to your spirit as you pray. And it's not short, but yes, he said the Lord will do it because it's, it's not short. Amen. What a wonderful promise. The Lord says, my hand is not too short. You know what this says? If, 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 if Rosie was standing here and praying for her, that's what would come out of her mouth. The Lord is saying, my hand is not too short. What do, how does that make you feel? Very happy. Very happy. Very hopeful. That's what God is going to do something. Anybody else? What comes to your heart? Yes, come. Um, what did I say? It's like the whole story, I know going before God asking for the child, but it wasn't so much that he's not looking to give you the space. It's almost like when you pray for the space, commit back the space to God, because it's not just the business that's going to come out of the space. People need to be healed. People need to be touched. So the space is more than just a space to so commit back what you're asking to God, because it's a part of your assignment. I don't know. It's just Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel that one. That one deep. That is taking you beyond getting the space now. You know what that also says to me? She's getting the space. <laughs> She's getting it. She's getting it. And, and, then, um, and then he's going to do more. Oh, hallelujah. This is so wonderful. My sister, you had something. Take. Well, um, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was just hearing the voice and life. Yes. Um, so the Lord led me to pray just that 
you would shake up your devotional life and yes. bring you into deeper understanding of how he speaks to you and that there will be no distractions when you're supposed to go into devotion oh. and um just that you know he will give you different ideas because that is where he's actually speak to us more and we actually hear him so clear hallelujah Ooh. Boy, is the prophetic grace is upon us. And that is so encouraging. Now the Lord zero in on our devotional life. So you don't feel sorry you came up here, right? <laughs> because, you know, God is doing a complete work. Yes, a complete work in her life. So he's now taking her. He wants her to come deeper in her intimacy. That's what the devotional life is going to you. And then out of what she said, he wants to reveal more. So guess what? Expect so hope of creativity coming down now about how you're going to use that space as you spend that time with him, yes? And more will come, more than you can ever ask or dare to imagine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody else? Andre, you have something? <laughs> or you have something else? Yes. Abundantly. Yes. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Hallelujah. You have something? Yes, go. Hallelujah. Well, all, all I saw when I was praying for you is I saw you in an office space, but it is like a penthouse setting. And you are, you are, obvi you, you are obviously the person in charge, but there are others. There are other workers and you were like just moving among them and giving instructions and, you know, like supervising everything. That's what I saw. Wow. Awesome. Now this, this gets predictive. Are you seeing that? So that, that's, that's powerful, by the way, because you're going to another dimension now. You're actually seeing some things um, happening um, and, um, and it's, it's, it's being predictive also about the nature of that space that, that you'll be getting. Boy, I don't know, you should have been taking notes. But there's so much God is saying. Now, why is God saying so much about her? Because he loves her. Hallelujah. Now we celebrate God for his love tonight. Amen. <laughs> celebrate God for his love. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Now let me just pray for you as well. Sorry. Hallelujah. Lord, can we just, just release every all the words that came. Lord, we just release these words. Hallelujah. Upon your servant, O oh God, and we thank you for a vessel of honor, a vessel that is so receptive, so humble to hear what you would say to her spirit. God, we pray you conform her heart to your heart. And those things that you promise, hallelujah, we, we, we thank you, God, that you will cause them to come to pass and lord we thank you for that which you have, have brought as an assurance to her heart that you not only hear her prayers but you have come to answer them and to do the exceeding abundantly above all that she could ever ask or dare to imagine in jesus name we pray amen hallelujah glory to god pastor mike mm -hmm. My dear sister Karine, mm -hmm. travel all the way from country. <laughs> um, Virgin, I, we prayed for Karine. Karine, we haven't seen each other in such a long time. We don't know what's been happening. Um, but I just want to say to you tonight that it is, it's, it's, you know, it's okay to cry. Yeah. Um, sometimes our tears comes back to us. Yes. As anointing. Yes. Yes. And uh, you've been holding back the tears. I'm not sure why. The tears are part of God's God's process in shaping us. And, and and refashioning what he wants to do in our lives. Sometimes when we don't cry, we 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 perhaps intuitively resisting what God wants to do. So that's what I want to say to you tonight that it is it's okay to cry. And the Lord is saying, 
come and lay down the burdens you have carried. Hallelujah. For in mm. the sanctuary, God, God is, is here. here. Glory to God. And I just feel like part of your release tonight is to do some of what God told Ezekiel to do, to act out the word. Lie down on your side. Yeah. You know, knock a hole in the wall. Mm. Um, I don't pretend to understand those things. But I just feel like the part of the release that you've been carrying a lot of things and nobody don't know. And um, that's not how we are made to operate, you know. And But I believe that part of your release is... is it's going to come through tonight. Tonight is, is to act out, act out this instruction to lay down the burdens you have carried. So I don't know if, if there's a heavy bag around the place that you could pick up. And Amen. Just lay down the bags. Yes, let's and, do that. And let's, let's pray. It's a prophetic action. A prophetic act. And, and we, we, we encourage this sometimes. To you go through the motion let's take a bag and 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 stand up and um it's as if you're laying down the heavy burden yes right can, yes. can you identify what we're saying yes yes hallelujah yes let's lay it down on the chair now hallelujah lift up your hands and just praise him your lord is lighter <laughs> glory to god hallelujah you know what I love about that word that Pastor Mike just brought? You know, one of the, some of the times when Jeremiah prophesied, he, 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 he called the people, he says to them, my dear people, in other words, he was tender-hearted. Prophets are tender-hearted. Amen? So he would say, my dear people. And, and that's what I hear coming out of that recognition of your tears and what you have been going through. He's carrying the burden of your pain. Praise God. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Before we go tonight, we want to, want to engage someone on the call. Um, um, and uh, we want to pray, pray for them tonight. I see Shanna. All right. So I want us to pray, but I'm going to ask one or two of us come to pray for Shanna. All right. Um, so Shanna, we're going to pray for you. Um, we, are, we are going to feel what you... Um, we don't know the lord just has to reveal some of this to our hearts and we're going to just share that as you think about shanna especially for persons who um know shanna and know some of the challenges I want us to lift up shanna tonight i'm going to ask one or two persons to come and just pray what god lay on your heart about shanna right and we're going to just share this with her and just bring her before god um because we are learning to carry burdens um is it possible to hear to engage them by voice all right so so shana before we we pray is there is there something that is standing out the most the most the, the main thing that you'd want to see change in your heart in your life we want to give you the opportunity to say what that is and then we're going to pray and do a similar thing that we just did and and um allow the holy spirit to to just bring you under the spotlight and begin to pour out upon you so shana if you can open your mic and just share with us very quickly um, a burden that you're carrying that you want to share with us okay. um, i mean there's there's been a lot wow um, and i mean god has been speaking to me and god has been um, you know, he assured me of his love, but I really want to get back to the place where I um, really trust in him and really reaching out to him in the way that I used to and even more. First thing I hear you Shana, is that you're going through a lot. Oh God, she's going through a lot. And it should just, just give us a tip of the iceberg. I'm going to ask also some of the guys um, that are joining us online. We're going to select one or two of you to pray for Shana. 
Um, so, so Lorna, Lorna, I want you to, to pray a prayer for Shanna as well. And, and, um, and, and one or two of us here will also pray for Shanna. She's going through a lot. Amen. Let us allow the Holy Spirit just to reveal what some of these things are. Um, 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 get ready, Tiffany, to pray also for Shanna. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Lorna, you want to just open your mic and just pray a prayer for Shanna. Oh, my God and my Father. Hallelujah. God, I come to you. On behalf of yeah. Shanna, Lord, you heard her cry. She wanted to get back to that place. You heard yes. what Bruce felt that she's carrying a lot. And oh my mm. God, I do know she's carrying a lot. And so, Lord, I cry out tonight, oh God, that you would show up oh and God. show yourself strong. Oh yes, my God. God, let Shanna know. Let her know mm. that you love her, oh my God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I pray that Shanna will know that you love her, oh my God. Yes. Yes. And even as Shanna cries out to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, oh God. But God, yeah. I am so thankful and I want Shanna to know, Lord, that you love her. You are a forgiving God, Lord. You are a God of it's redemption. God, it's God hallelujah. Just walk. Oh, hallelujah. Walk, oh God, with your eyes and my totally. Hallelujah, Shana, hallelujah. <laughs> It will be well. The Lord yes. is with you. The Lord, the Lord I thank you for your daughter. Thank you for your oh, treasure, Lord. Oh, my God, I thank you. I thank you, oh, God. And I just say, it is well, Shanna. It will be well. It is well. It is Beautiful. well. And it will be well. It will be well. Well, whatever well it is. But, Lord, I thank you for Shanna. Lord, let her feel your love like liquid, like a liquid just pouring over her now. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord Hallelujah. I don't know what to say, Lord. I just say, Lord, you know. And you in know your God. mercy. You know God. And in your grace. Yes. Lord, let her know. That you're with her she is the one who needs to hold on Amen. because you said it you will never leave or forsake her Glory you will never move away hallelujah you just keep holding on yes. so Lord, strengthen her grip in the name of jesus strengthen Glory. her grip in jesus' name amen it is well amen. 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 hallelujah amen. hallelujah amen. hallelujah Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I just thank you for that. I thank you for that, Lorna. You were literally just carrying that burden. And as you release it, you, you felt, as we hear you stronger and stronger in your prayers, because you're releasing and releasing on her behalf. So prayer, my brothers and sisters, activate the prophetic heart. And the heart of prophecy comes out when we begin to carry the burden of our brothers and sisters it comes out spontaneously tiffany get ready to just pray for shanna right now hallelujah whatever the lord reveals to you just pray for her there's so much that's going on in her spirit hallelujah lord we lift you up and we magnify you we exalt your holy name father lord we thank you mighty god that in the midst of our troubles and our trials mighty god hallelujah that we can run to you father mm. we can run to you mighty yes. god our strong tower in which we will be safe father lord i pray mighty god 
that in this season, Father, as Shanna is going through a lot, mm -hmm. Lord, I pray, mighty God, that you will remind her, Father, yes. that you are her strong tower mm -hmm. in which she can run into mm -hmm. and she will be safe. Father, I pray, mighty God, that you will cause your spirit to be close to Shanna. Lord, mm. as she seeks you, may she finds you, yes. Father. Lord, I pray, mighty God, that you will lavish your love upon Hallelujah. her. Hallelujah, yes. Mighty God, I pray that you will sing over her even mm. as she's sleeping, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you will use this time, this opportunity, this season that she's going through, Father, to open up, mighty God, her dream life, Father. Yes. And you will speak to her there, Father, that she will encounter you even as she sleeps, Lord. Father, I pray, mighty God, that she will not leave this season, Father, not, not having the desire that she, she has no mighty God, Hallelujah. not having, having it manifest, Father, to know you deeper, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, it is, it is your will, mighty God, that we know you. Mm. We, are all, we are your sheep, Father, and we should know your voice. And I pray even in this season, Father, that Shanna will know your voice. Mighty God, I pray, Father, that she will know you yes, Lord. the way she desire to, Father. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you will remind her of Psalm 121. Hallelujah. That's the psalm that came into my spirit as yes. I started praying for you, Shana. Mm. The Lord wants you to remember mm. that, he, that he is your help. Hallelujah. Glory to he God. He is your help in the time of trouble hallelujah glory to god and shana just want to encourage you to read that psalm pray it over yourself hallelujah in this season so lord we thank you for what you're doing even now and we thank you for what you will do for shana in jesus name Hallelujah. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. From, from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip, Shana. He who watches over you, you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you, Shana. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night the Lord will keep you from all harm what a promise the Lord will keep you from all harm and God in the name of Jesus that which the enemy sets as traps that which the enemy sets to defeat to, pr to bring this comfort and discouragement in the name of Jesus we thank you that you will keep her from harm and we cut her off from every such attack we pray that you strengthen her feet and you strengthen her arms and you be there to strengthen her and to lift her up out of that situation Situation. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, for you watch over her. Hallelujah, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming out and your going in. Hallelujah, from this time forth and even forevermore. Father, we lift her up and we thank you, almighty God, that you are a friend to her. We thank you that when she calls, you will answer. And while she's speaking, you are are delivering and God before she calls Lord you know what is upon her heart we pray hallelujah for a new season in her life oh God we pray almighty God that you open new doors of opportunity new doors of blessing new doors of abundance hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord those things that weigh heavily we pray that you lift the heavy load and you cause Prince of Peace that your peace will come upon her in a fresh you way that you pour in hallelujah your joy deep within her spirit and cause her to stand strong and tall in the midst of trouble she will look hallelujah upon you oh god she will lift her eyes to the hills for her help cometh from you mighty god and father we pray that in these times of trial that she will find her solution in you we thank you lord for every desire that she has brought
God before you in prayer. We come into agreement, oh God, for every need that has not yet been met. We pray, oh God, hallelujah, that you will supply every need in accordance with your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, that you make a way where there seems to be no way. And that our heart will be glad to know that God, you have our back in the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. I encourage you to continue to pray for Shana in your own quiet time. But as you pray and as you hear God speaking, write what you hear. Share it because in doing that, we... <laughs> We, we just release the prophetic and that which God has placed in our heart for the brethren. There's a lot more that we can do, but one of the things I just want to say as I conclude, that as we pray, we activate the burden in the prophetic that God would release his voice through us. And the more you do it, the more you do that, brethren, is the more you get uh, an understanding of what is in God's heart and what it is that God wants us to say from the heart of prophecy. Glory to God. If you learn anything tonight, let's give God praise and glory. Amen. Hallelujah. There are a few more things that I had, but I won't bother to do that in the interest of time. Um, exercises for activation. I just want to um, encourage us to really just ask the Lord to give us a revelation of his heart. Amen. And that would really help to ground our understanding on our experience in this prophetic anointing. Pastor Mike, don't know if you had anything to praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank everyone for turning out and, and also for the very engaging um, online posse that came to be a part of this experience for everybody who came tonight. And, and I just want to bless God again for the worship team that, and the media team that has really been a source of help and encouragement to us. Can we give the Lord praise and glory for them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I uh, just want to thank our brother Bruce tonight for a very insightful presentation. You know, Virgin, God's ways are, are past finding out. And there's so much intrigue about the prophetic ministry. Um, but it is so critical to what God wants to accomplish. And I uh, really want to encourage all of us to just to be open to God speaking through us. You know, sometimes as church people, we believe that the Holy Spirit only works in the church, in the building. But... You know, brethren, in our personal evangelism, expect the Holy Spirit to show and tell us things that we're not supposed to know, that we might win some. And I really thank our brother Bruce for this deep dive tonight, enabling us to, to catch us at the sight of, of the prophetic, you know, as an expose of God's heart, God's mind, for individuals, for situations, even for the nations and that prophecy is not something that is just a nice to have prophecy is about something that God has set himself to distribute to his people as part of the work of advancing his kingdom in the earth so I hope we will carry on some nuggets tonight yes we carry on some nuggets we made some notes I only said Marcia making notes um, <laughs> uh, but but praise God, praise God, brethren, praise God, Amen. 
So, Father, we thank you tonight for, for this time together, for the Lord, for this time of gathering. Lord, for the, the challenge to our own hearts, oh God, to, to rediscover, Lord, the, the things that, that, that you would do amongst us and through us. Lord, I pray that we will learn to be quiet in your presence. But Lord, in the rush of life, sometimes, Lord, we, we can only hear the things that are causing us to rush. But Lord, you would call us to be still and know that you are God. You will be exalted among the nations. Lord, may our ears be open. May our eyes be open. Father, may our spirits, God, be, be shining with brilliance. For the, for the spirit of man is a, is a lamp of the body. Lord God in heaven, may we as a people, Lord, who, who have come into increasing understanding and are coming into increasing understanding, of who we are in you, of what you have given us, of what you have distributed for the, for the common good. Lord, may we be bold enough, Lord, to step out in faith, not being afraid of the faces of men, but Lord, being committed to pleasing you. For Lord, there are souls to be saved. There are people to be rescued. Lord, there are lives, oh God in heaven, that are on the verge of destruction. But Lord, when your word is spoken, your word that is spirit and life, it brings resurrection out of death. And so God, tonight we pray that Lord God in heaven, our ears and our mouths may be available to you and that our hearts, almighty God, Lord God, would not be overruled by our heads as we listen to you. But that, God, we may be a people who are surrendered and submitted to you as instruments, Lord, of your righteousness. God, as vehicles, hallelujah, of your grace, as conduits of your presence, as messengers under a new covenant. Hallelujah. Lord God in heaven, for we are not the old creation. We are the new creation. God possessed with different things from the old creation. Called to be collaborators with you in your vineyard. Hallelujah. And called as custodians of the presence of the Lord to manifest it, Lord, in diverse ways for the saving of many and for the rescue of the perishing and of the caring for the dying. Lord, may we be willing in this day. Hallelujah. May we be found willing on the day that you show up. And in the hour that you would show up, Lord, may we be found available to you. Hallelujah. That your will might be advanced through, the, through us to change lives. That we may be instruments of transformation. For Lord, when we speak your word, when we speak your word, we are ministering life. And we are ministering spirit to others. In Jesus' name, amen.